All right, guys, Mark Gonzalez and Billy Guy with Rackham TV here, and it looks like Dennis won the lag, and we are about to get started. Here we go. How about this, man? Two balls on a break already. And here we go. Guys, we're at Bill's Billiards in Oklahoma City. Uh, we want to give a big shout-out to Bill and, and hosting us uh, again for this event. Um, this is where we were last month, and we had a blast. The staff's amazing. The place is amazing. Filled with diamond tables. Everything's going great. Um, so uh, we're, we're kicking off. Here we go, Billy. This is going to be a race to 40 today um, before they shut it down for the night, and then we've got nonstop action all day tomorrow and all day Sunday for you guys. Already, man. Well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and step out. we got J.J. in the booth coming in, so... Uh you guys yeah, enjoy. Let's, let's welcome Jeremy Jones. All right, so you guys on the stream, uh, if you're having trouble with the stream, try refreshing it. If you're still having problems casting it or anything like that, uh, you can hit the settings wheel and change your video settings to uh, 720 instead of 1080. That that usually works for most people, especially if you're, your Internet's a little shoddy. But here we go, working our way through the first rack here, and I want to introduce Mr. Jeremy Jones in the booth. How you doing, Jeremy? Good, Mark. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm, I'm fantastic. Stoked about this match we got here. Yeah, it's going to be a... A long uh, <clears throat> test, that's for sure, for both guys. And both guys are very familiar with each other, which I think really helps. Usually uh, guys will get real comfortable quickly and play great uh, for a long time. Dennis now on the four ball. And I like that play coming with the angle here to move the cue ball to the seven. The table's fast. He's got to watch out on shots like that. Was he playing that for the side, or was he playing that for the corner? You know, before he shot it, I would have said probably the corner, the way the table, you know, it laid, and I think he probably was. But a lot of times you'll creep into there, Mark, knowing that you have both. You know, I know that sounds like um, kind of like not so detailed, right, like you think a professional would be more exact. But when you get on a slick table, uh, you stay away from exact a little bit more on certain shots, and you know you he was never going to be in trouble on that shot. That was kind of the key. Yeah, I was I was about to say, Jeremy, that goes against everything I've ever heard you say. You uh, want to pick your spot. Don't say just anywhere but here because you'll end up there. You you want to pick your exact spot of where you're going to go. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but it's more like to pick your exact spot or pick a, a real detailed spot. That way you have a big area. It's yeah. just a matter of knowing where that spot should be. That's all, you know. But you normally on a when a table's faster or on the other hand uh, slower, you'll see the guys guard against the little thi little things just to make sure they don't get uh, like right there on top of the ball or fall on the rail. All right, so Dennis takes first blood here, and this is going to be, you know. These days, you talk more about the break being a big difference in the in matches, uh, much more than it used to be. You know, it always is a factor. Don't get me wrong. Watch out for the corner here. Mm. Okay. And the so, four seven has gotten funny, but um, anyways, Mark, what I was getting at is, you know, years ago, you know, you lose matches, and you know, we didn't play races to 120 all the time, but and you'd sometimes say the break cost me but you could always identify a few shots you really messed up on that really cost you the match but these days the way the break is so dominating in the game no matter the format i'm interested to see how the break goes this week for both guys i was just going to bring up if you could give myself and the people out there a little bit of an idea of what the difference is with the nine ball being racked on the spot well <clears throat> you know there's not you know you see how powerful um, when the template's on the spot, right? Right. Uh, when the one's on the spot, ex excuse me, uh, that you can make a lot of balls. Like It's almost like they have paths they're going to when the, when the one's on the spot. Well, moving it up that, that ball to where the nine's on the spot really changes it totally, meaning if you hit them head on, there's really none that are going towards direct paths. You know? Right. So you play more of a cut break trying to play the one in the side. Now the... The added part of the equation is getting that three-point rule, which is getting two pass. If you make the one in the side, you have to get two more balls past the head string. Gotcha. So um, you will see some of those breaks that, you know, some people call them uh, 
Oh, that's a big oh. scratch there. Some people call them a, a non-compliant break or illegal break to where the incoming player will have a choice. Is believe uh, is that's how they're playing, right, Mark? Uh, where I have the choice to like if they don't legally break, uh -huh. uh, the incoming player has the choice to shoot from there or, or give it back to the breaker, right? I think so. Yeah. So he's still got the four trouble with the four seven here. Yeah, and the six is a big ball. Like if the six wasn't there, he could play shape on the three to really, you know, come right across the middle of the table and bump the four seven maybe. Now he may have to go underneath, uh, like drop on the three on the bottom rail. Gotcha. And come underneath the nine and into the bottom side of the four and the seven. All this right. This is odd, though. Now, he could just set up for a little cut shot on the three and come one rail right at the four and seven. Okay. Because the two will be gone. Right. Uh, so he's got some choices. I don't mind that one, actually. Okay, we'll see how he's going to cue it. Is he going to draw all the way back to the end rail? No, he's just going to come one row at it. Okay. That's pretty natural with just a touch of left English. He, I would have probably scooted a little closer towards the three myself, <laughs> maybe six or eight inches. Right. You know? um, but nevertheless, this is fine for him. He won't baby it too much. Uh, he needs a real friendly bump here. He's not going to get mm. it. And this ball ran a bit, so speed holding on top of the seven isn't quite so easy. Because you're further away? Yeah, yeah, you're a little further away. Now, he, he could chip the four and use the nine as a, as a snugger, putting the cue ball behind the nine on the side rail. He could come behind the five. That's surprising he decided to move behind the five. He must have felt real confident in doing so. Great shot. Now Shane should kick just one rail trying to come across this ball. Trying to just leave a difficult shot, maybe getting a snooker on the four behind the nine or something like that. He could kick two rails underneath it, but... And a lot of times we're used to watching these guys play 10 ball, so friendly reminder, luck does count here. We're playing 9 ball. Right. I would just kick and try and medium rub across this 4 like that. He got a little unlucky not to leave a tougher shot. but And I'll tell you, this ball got a little thin. So there's some blockers out there, Mark, with the cue ball for, to get on the 5. Right. He's got to really work it back across, right? Yeah, maybe even catch the 7. Here it is, don't miss. That's what I was about to say, don't miss trying to get the cue ball somewhere. Gotcha. Yep. As world class as these players are, Jeremy, and yourself also, I, I, the commentator curse for me is it, it's very real. Is it, do you have the same? Does it does it haunt you as well? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely haunted me before. I don't think it's uh, personal to any one commentator, really. <laughs> Personally attached. All right, so Dennis gets game two. Uh, guys, I'm going to go ahead and step out of the booth. This is Mark Gonzalez with Rackham TV, and I'm going to bring in uh, Mr. Joey Gray. Uh, so you guys enjoy this expert commentary from these two. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much. Uh, Y'all have a, have a good time. Thanks, Mark. No problem.
Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Jeremy Jones back, and it's 2 nothing. bringing in Joey Gray now. Hey, Joey. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, good. How you been? Pretty good, pretty good. Really excited for this match. Looks like Orcolo's really getting this uh, a good start here, huh? Yeah, and he's been pretty successful. Everything he's done, he's had to play a couple really touchy safeties, uh, some nice runouts, some good breaks. I didn't get to see what he did on that last game. Whenever he, uh, I guess, I'm guessing Watch he played out safe here. on the if he floor. Watch out here if he gets a funny bump here. Oh, man. Just grazed it. Yeah, that was tight. I mean, he could have kicked the three in, but if he had to shoot the seven from distance, like kicking the three in or something, that gets tough getting on the eight. So. Oh, yeah. Well, he still fell a little bit straight, but, I mean, he should be okay. Be able to Usually, just stun it around. Yeah, them guys rails. Can pound the ball out a little mm -hmm. bit if they need to. Oh, he had a better angle than I thought. Okay, now this is the one he didn't want to fall straight, straight in on flat, the end. Yeah, because yeah. this this angle, if he was perfectly straight, it'd be fine. Yeah, he'll pound it and let it jerk off with that new like that. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's a good stroke. Uh, that falls on the rail though. This table's quick, Joey. I don't think I don't know if you've got to hit any balls on it since they refelt it or not. But man, I've played a lot of pool on these tables, but. I've never hit balls whenever it was just freshly new, like new felt with these predator balls, and that's one thing that Skyler told me. He felt like the predator balls, for some reason, made them made it even faster. It seems like it's a, it's a, you know, and I don't know if it's the predator balls. I've never played on this table to the last couple of days, and I didn't get much time then. But um, it seems like it's a little boingier than it should be. The table, yeah, or just the, with the balls. Maybe. Yeah, well, the balls are nice and clean and new, and the tables. You know, the felt's good. The weather's pretty good. The well, atmosphere seems fine as far as conditions. I'll be honest with you. You know, I've been playing pool here at Bill's for, I mean, ever since they opened. And the bar tables, once the bar tables get worn in, I mean, they play real tough. I mean, as far as as far as far just regular diamonds. Yeah, I mean, they sure. just They are extremely bouncy. And I don't know if it has something to do with the humidity being closer to the door, but either way. Yeah, we'll see. I'm sure we see a variety of the breaks this in the hundred race to 120, wouldn't you think, Joey? I mean, unless the guy's just ginning it from the get, but I mean, so far, Carlos really got control of this break. Yeah, I felt a little funny on this one. He could almost play a two-way, holding the cue ball up underneath the four with like low outside, trying to bank it back underneath him. I like that. I really, I like that shot quite a bit. Yeah, he's close to it, so that makes it you can really twist the ball and hold it real well. Yeah. He might be going for the carom here. Uh, I don't know. It looked like he was just going to bank it up and put him behind the four. but That's possible. I mean, I, th I don't see how he could pass that option because. He can almost cut it into the right with I the swear, three I, I was actually thinking like like almost like a kill inside shot. but uh, Just I mean, run it, I think. Oh, maybe. just go it. Just with go the with three it. hanging. You know, I I mean, you. Take your, as long as you're not going directly towards a corner yeah. scratching or something. But I think uh, with the other camera angle, we can see how high that two ball is off the rail. Because you can, from this from the, the front angle, it looks like it's too close to the rail to make that shot. But, yeah, this angle, it does look like it, it is very cuttable. Cuttable, yeah. And he's right.